wonder what's going on out here today. Dr. Romano, what are you doing on the tennis court? Want to hit a few balls? Yeah, I'm going to hit a few balls. I'm going to call these balls overkill. So come along and have a look. Overkill? I'm going to show you some overkill. We're going to talk about the lanthanides. Now, I want you to listen to me very carefully. The lanthanides are also known as the rare earth elements. Along with the actinides, they sometimes call them the inner transition elements. So you got to be a little careful of the verbiage. Now, the lanthanides are going to be filling the 4F orbitals. They're very soft, they're silvery, ductile, malleable, they are reasonably good electrical conductors, and they're all very similar in properties. And that's due to the shielding by the inner core electrons. Now, what I want you to know before we do this exercise is just to review, if you're in the S sublevel, we can hold two maximum electrons, P can hold six, D can hold 10, and the F can hold 14. Now, my guys, we haven't gone that far out other than the, into the D orbital core. But I wanted you to, to show you a trick just in the unlikely event we have to go really far out in electron configuration. So a little trick that's known as the diagonal rule is you first write 1s, and you're going to go all the way down to the number 7. So 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, and stop at lucky 7. Then you're going to go to the next column and just write 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p, 6p. We can stop it at 6. And then over here we're going to go 3d, 4d, 5d, 6d. And we stop it there. And then this column, 4f, 5f, 6f. What I want you to do is I want you to practice that. Now, what we'll do is, so once you got another way you could have done it is you could have wrote 1s, then 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d. So I'll let you figure that out. When you come down like this, that'll be 1s. Then you come down again, that'll be 2s. Then you come down, 2p, 3s. And then we come down here, 3p, 4s. And then when you come down here, what does this say? 3d, 4p, 5s, etc. I want you to practice it until you can get out to lucky seven. So this is going to be the core that you need that'll give you the answer most of the time. Um, as an example, we're going to use an element you probably never heard of called praseodymium. Praseodymium has a mass of 141 and an atomic number of 59. So obviously 59, I personally think, is a little too much for the DAT or the MCAT or the O. But let's just do it as an exercise and shoot for 59. So we're going to shoot for 59 electrons. So we have this in front of us as a guide. Don't memorize it. So we're going to shoot for 59 and we get 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2, and there it is, 4f3, with three unpaired electrons. I hope this helps. If you can do this, this is a guaranteed type of question on the DAT, the ODA, and the MCAT. I don't think you'll need to go out this far, but you know I love 30 and I love overkill. So just as a safeguard, but before you do anything, just practice how to do this mindless little trick here. Lay them out, cross it over, and you can probably do it in 15 seconds and you can have all the orbitals um, laid out and whatever they ask. It's a commonly asked question on the grad school exams though. So just as a safeguard, we should know how to do it. I didn't show it to my destroyer group this year, but I'm going to be mentioning this tape to the kids over the summer, and I think I want you to know it just to be on the safe side. All right, I hope this helps on a fun video, I hope, that now takes away the mystery on how to do these configurations. Okay, Dr. Romano, I have my tennis racket in the car. You want to play, hit a few rounds? Get your ass back to studying. Good day to you. Good day to you, sir. Boy, he never takes a break.